Hi! In today's video, we'll talk about how the motorcycle steering works and specifically we'll focus on the concept of counter steering. If you haven't heard about counter steering yet, this is your lucky day! Because today you'll learn how you can lean your bike really fast and really far, like you never did before. And if you already heard of counter steering, but still have some doubts about it and can't wrap your head around it, don't worry, I promise it'll become super clear by the end of this video. All you have to do is to listen and watch closely. I divided the whole explanation into small and easy steps, followed one by one. Again, all you have to do is to watch, listen and do not skip anything, because each step will be very important. Let's go! Ok, counter steering. What is it actually? A lot of people explain it like this. Counter steering is when you turn the handlebars and your bike goes to the opposite direction. You turn left, bike goes right. You turn right, bike goes left. Easy peasy. Or it can look somewhat like this. Counter steering is simple. You push right to go right, you push left to go left. Naturally, such explanations create a whole bunch of questions. Why should the bike go to the opposite direction? Does it always work like this? Why haven't I noticed it earlier? Why bother with all this counter-steering mumbo-jumbo when I can use good old plain steering instead? A lot of questions. And to make matters worse, often we hear things like this. Counter-steering works only above 40 mph. Under 40 mph it is direct steering. The fact that the name counter steering naturally implies that there is some direct steering as an alternative also makes matters worse. So for now, let's just throw all this in the bin and start our explanation from scratch. For a time being, let's just pretend we don't know anything about steering the bike. We are a brand new rider and we need to learn the whole process, which we'll do in steps. So the first step. Let's start from the most basic fundamental thing. Why our bike stays upright when it moves? It only has two wheels, it is not a very stable system on the first glance. Yet, when we ride, we don't fall somehow. A lot of people think that is due to the gyroscopic forces being produced by spinning wheels. I thought that myself for a long time, but actually it's not true. When gyroscopic forces certainly have their impact, especially on higher speeds. The majority of our bike stability comes not from them, it comes from geometrical properties of our bike, specifically the steering geometry, which is usually being described with fancy words like caster angle, rake, offset, trail, etc. On different bikes this stuff can be different in order to achieve specific steering behavior, but all motorcycles share some key similarities. On all bikes the fork and steering column are not perpendicular to the ground, they always are at some angle. And on all bikes, if we draw an imaginary line through the steering column and find a point where it crosses the road, the center of our contact patch will always be behind this point. This distance is called trail. And it can be different length, but the center of the contact patch will always be behind this point. What this do is when our bike leans, because the contact patch is behind the steering axis, it makes the wheel automatically turn in the direction of the lean. And when our bike moves forward, this self-steering prevents our bike from falling down. That's why we sometimes can see stuff like this, when riderless bike corrects itself and proceeds to go forward until it runs out of speed or meets an obstacle. That's the cool thing about motorcycle design. The front wheel always automatically corrects the course of the bike. You even can perform several experiments with your bike to prove that. For example, as you can see, I can move my bike forward like this quite easily, without even touching the handlebars. The wheels move pretty slow and the engine doesn't even work, so obviously gyroscopic forces don't help me here. 
If, however, I try to move the bike to the opposite direction, I will have much harder time trying to keep it upright. Because now the steering geometry is backwards. We can even see the same effect with the bicycle. It is pretty stable when moving forward, but can't do the same when it goes backwards, despite having the exactly same amount of rotating mass to its wheels. Therefore, we can clearly see that gyroscopic forces have little to do with stability of our bike. It goes forward without falling down primarily because of steering geometry, which provides stabilizing self-steering effect. That's the first important thing. Now to the second part. We already saw that the front wheel automatically turns into the direction of motorcycle lean angle. The more the lean angle, the more the turn of the handlebars. Again, we can perform a simple experiment to see that. Here you can see how when the bike is more vertical, the front wheel is also straighter. And when I force the bike to lean more, the wheel also turns more and more. Again, I clearly don't touch handlebars, so they obviously steer themselves. But that's only half of the story. Speed also affects how much the front wheel turns itself. You probably already noticed that when bike turns at slow speeds, the front wheel also turns quite a lot, sometimes even to a full lock position, when it can't turn anymore. And vice versa, when a motorcycle corners at high speed, the handlebars are almost straight. We can use it to our advantage. By changing the speed of our bike, we can also change the turning radius. If we gradually slow down, the front wheel will automatically turn itself more and will end up with tighter turn. And if we gradually accelerate, we'll have bigger radius. Here, for example, I can even keep the handlebars in full lock position just by carefully operating the rear brake. So the bike has the proper speed. Again, the front wheel does the whole job by itself. I don't even have to touch the handlebar. As you can see, the front wheel does a lot of stuff by itself, without any help from the rider. All we have to do is to change the speed and the lean angle as we need, and the steering will do the rest by itself. What's the point of handlebars then? As you remember, in the first step I was changing the lean angle of the bike by running around and pulling the tail down. Obviously, this is very dumb practice, so that's why we have handlebars to change the lean angle of our motorcycle. That's our third step, by the way. Let's see how it works. As we already know, if we let go the handlebars and sit straight, our bike will just go straight. But what if we turn the handlebars instead? I don't know. Let's try and see what happens. Here I go straight at the camera. Now, at some point, I decide to turn the handlebars to the right. As we can see, the front wheel with the whole front end of the bike starts to go to the right. But since the bike is not a car and don't have anything supporting it from the left side, it starts to tip to the left more and more. Obviously, if I just keep holding the handlebars turned to the right, my bike will soon end up lying on its left side. So at some point, I let go the handlebars and let them turn themselves to the left. And as we already know from the first two steps, they turn themselves exactly enough to stabilize the bike and prevent it from falling down. The part where I initially turned the handlebars, which made my bike lose its balance and tip to the left, is what people call counter-steering. It is called so because it initiates the lean of the bike to the opposite direction. If we turn the handlebars left, we lean right. If we turn the handlebars right, we lean left. And that's it. The counter-steering is just an input we make on the handlebars to change the lean angle of the bike. Nothing more. A lot of people become confused because they think that counter-steering is when the bike is turning and the front wheel is facing the other direction, like in a drift. But no. Counter-steering is just an input to change the lean angle. It's the steering technique which is dictated by the very design of the motorcycle. If we try to turn the handlebars from the current balance point, 
Our bike will always change the lean angle to the opposite direction until we reduce pressure and let the front wheel stabilize the bike on the new lean angle. It works not only when we go straight initially. If, let's say, we are doing left-hand circle, we can briefly apply counter-steering to lean more. We push the left handlebar forward, which temporarily makes the wheel straighter than it should, making the bike lean more. And if we want to change the lean angle to make the bike more vertical, we push the right grip temporarily, and our bike stands up. We can use counter-steering for any type of maneuvers. We can apply it pretty fast, which will make our bike change lean angle very fast. We can slowly apply counter-steering to lean our bike just a little. We can use it on higher speeds, on slower speeds, on big heavy bikes, on small light ones. We can initiate the lean angle, we can change the lean angle while already in turn. We can flip the bike from side to side fast or slow. Anything you want really, counter steering lets us do a lot of stuff. Before we go to practice part, let's answer some frequent questions about counter steering. Why can't we use direct steering instead? This question happens because of terminology misunderstanding. Counter steering is the brief period when we apply the force on handlebars to change the lean angle. In that sense, there is no direct steering. If we apply the force on handlebars, the lean angle inevitably changes to the opposite direction. That's the feature of motorcycle design. What people usually mean by direct steering is that when the bike is already turning, the front wheel faces the same direction. And unless we are drifting, that's exactly what happens. But by this time, we already have a lean angle and we are already turning. So the counter steering part was done before that. And now the front wheel just does whatever it needs to keep the bike from falling down. I have ridden for 40 years and I never used counter steering. Actually, you have been using it the whole time. But you just did it unconsciously, without even realizing it. Counter steering part is what our brain is able to learn unconsciously to a degree. Ok, if we do it unconsciously, why do we need to learn it and what's the point of this video? Though our brain learns how to do it to a degree, it rarely unlocks the whole potential of counter steering without realizing its existence. With counter steering, we can perform really fast collision avoiding maneuvers, we can lean our bike very far and we can initiate pretty tight turns. This is useful stuff, and that's why counter steering is always a part of any good motorcycle course. My courses are also good, by the way. Check out the links in the description. Shouldn't we lean the bike with our body? Yes, we can do that, but it is not as effective as counter steering. By leaning our body, we use only small portion of the whole combined weight. With counter steering, we can quickly lean the whole combined weight of both the rider and the bike. So it's just much more quick process. Let's see the example. Here I use my upper body. And here the counter steering. Shouldn't we steer the bike by putting the weight on either outer or inner foot peg? I don't know. Let's try and see. Here I removed weight completely from left foot peg, but the bike still goes straight. Here I removed the whole weight from the right foot peg, but the bike still goes straight. And here I removed weight from both foot pegs completely. I'm looking like a dork, but still somehow making the bike turn. So empiric evidence says that no, we don't steer the bike with our foot pegs. Now, as a fourth step of understanding the motorcycle steering process, we must put all the previous steps together. We have all the necessary tools now to make our bike go through any corner. We know that by briefly applying the counter steering, we can change the lean angle to whatever we want. Then we know that if we release pressure from the handlebars, the front wheel will turn itself the exact amount to stabilize our bike. And then we know that we can change the tightness of our turn by gradually changing the speed. 
If we slow down, front wheel automatically will turn more. And if we accelerate, it will automatically become straighter. Let's put this all together by doing the circle exercise. This exercise will be perfect for practicing, because it doesn't require much space and you can do it on almost any parking lot. Don't worry about particular size of the circle, it doesn't really matter for today. Focus on the feedback from your bike, particularly pay very close attention to what happens with your handlebars. We don't need any cones or any other markers, we are just experimenting now. Go on first gear in the friction zone. By the way, if you are yet not familiar with friction zone technique, check out this video as soon as possible. It will make your riding experience much better. Anyway, first gear, friction zone. No rear brake just for now. Remember to add some throttle and remember to keep your arms nice and loose. It is very important, because as you remember, you have to let the front wheel do its job and steer itself. Turn your head and apply counter steering. You don't need to apply it fast and hard right away. Apply it slowly at first. Let the bike lean just a little. Relax your arms and let the front wheel turn itself into the turn. Now you start making big circles. When you are ready, pull the clutch a little and start slowly decelerating. At this time, your main goal is to feel how handlebars turn themselves into the turn. The more you decelerate, the more they turn themselves. Don't try to help them or prevent them from turning. Don't interfere in any way. At this point, all you need to do is to get used to the fact that they turn themselves automatically. If at any point you feel unstable, just release the clutch and bike will stabilize itself. Experiment with that for some time. Keep your chin up and look at the horizon to prevent yourself from feeling dizzy. It's also a good practice to turn your shoulders parallel to the handlebars. This way you can turn your head even more and your arms will be at a relaxed natural position. Remember to always keep the throttle slightly open. You don't want to stall the engine in the middle of the turn, trust me. Make circles both ways, left and right. Once you get used to the feeling of self-turning front wheel, it's time to do the next step. Now try to initiate the turn with a bit more aggressive counter steering, so your bike leans just a little faster. Then, when making a circle, try to slow down even further, to the point when the front wheel turns to a full lock. At this moment, bike will become very unstable. Your job is to pick it up by releasing the clutch. Take your time now. It's one of the most difficult elements in slow speed riding. When you successfully can reach full lock at least for a few moments, you can start using the rear brake in addition to the clutch. This way you'll be able to reach full lock much faster. Let's watch how it should look when you put everything together. You initiate the turn with brief counter steering, then relax and let the wheel turn. Now you pull the clutch a little and apply rear brake if necessary. Keep your hands relaxed and change the circle radius with speed. Release the clutch and brake to go wider, apply the clutch and brake to go tighter. Remember to maintain the revs slightly up, remember to turn your head and shoulders into the turn and look far at the horizon. Don't stare at the ground. Pretty easy, once you get used to it. If at any moment you think something is wrong, don't look down, don't put your foot down and don't grab brakes. Just release the clutch and the bike will accelerate and become more stable. This exercise requires some time, so don't rush it. Hopefully, once you master it, it will become clear for you how motorcycle steering works. Ok, I hope this video was useful, and if it was, please put a like under it and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and have a nice day! Bye!